Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I am a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, we interview Katie Harrod about how she found her feet at university after her foundation year. We'll be discussing how you can get the most out of your first few weeks at university, how to deal with your reading lists, and how peer support can help you settle in at university. This episode will be really useful for anyone who's either just starting university or is about to start university in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so hello Katie and welcome to the Success of the Student podcast. Today we're going to be talking all about how you found your feet at university and also a little bit about how I found my feet as well. So before we get into the podcast, would you like to introduce yourself, uh, what you did just before starting university and your journey when you started and what you're studying? Okay, so um, I'm Katie and I've just finished my foundation year um, and that was in law. Um, A bit about my background, I left college at 17. I did my AS levels, but then I wanted to work. I had a two-year-old at the time um, and I just wanted to be a nurse. So I thought I'd go and get some real life experience. Then lockdown hit and I'd always sort of thought about going to university um, because something was always not quite right. No matter what job I had, I felt kind of uh, like restricted. I wanted to do more for the people that I was helping. Um, So during the lockdown, I had a bit of time off work and I thought, you know what, maybe this is my time to go to university. and yeah, I did. My partner said that he'd support me and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> here you are and you finished the foundation year of your first, of your law course. Uh, so first of all, how was starting that course having had such a break from your academic study uh, at A-levels beforehand? Um, it was quite daunting. Um, I had no idea what was sort of going on. Um I was just trying to like attend the lectures and try and read up about anything. So, you know, like you have all these course resources on Blackboard. So it was like, um, whereas now I know that I probably don't need to read certain things or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was reading everything to try and get to grips with what was going on. Um, And you just sort of feel like you're trying to get a hold of, and and know everything that you possibly can, but you just not is <laughs> you just not getting it. And um, but I mean, it went really quickly the first term. Mm. Um, but it was really nice as well because I felt like I finally belonged somewhere, and it really helped me to gain confidence because I was enjoying what I was doing. I think it was like the first time that I'd done something totally for me, and it just felt really nice um Mm. i think as well uh i do remember one of the lectures for study skills and it was an in-person one um i remember them doing a padlet i think it was about uh what people are concerned about for the year ahead for anybody who doesn't know what a padlet is it's um just like a server where you can type in and people can just put what they think um, it was an anon- anonymous one, but quite a lot of people said that they were nervous um, or anxious about meeting new people, hmm. uh, which was quite comforting to see how in common it was. And people were worried about people not liking them. Um, for me, I previously have had um, mental illness, and I still do, but I've learned to cope with it. Um, but I used to have quite bad anxiety. Um, but over the years I've sort of worked against that. Uh, well not against maybe with, um, 
to sort of combat that, I mean, instead of fearing a situation, I now challenge myself. So for instance, with this podcast, I mean, it's quite nerve wracking to put yourself in a new situation. Okay. And I think everybody feels like that, but Mm -hmm. the point is you need to challenge yourself and you need to say, I can do this. And you need to put yourself out there and get involved. Um, And that's the sort of attitude that I took on. um, And I found that it's much better to do life that way. You know, you don't want to just sit there being nervous, just go out and get it. Yeah, so I was just thinking about my first time and how you said about how you were, um, when you started, you were a bit nervous and you were trying to, first of all, read everything. I felt exactly the same way about that. And also making friends at the start of university and asking questions, answering questions. There was a lot of nerves for me as well. Um, And I agree with you in terms of just putting yourself out there, try to be confident for a moment to speak to someone. I remember... um, I remember looking around on the first days, there was quite a few nervous students. I remember thinking, okay, if I could talk to them, that might make their day. So I went and spoke to them and then they got the confidence to speak to someone else. And then you started making a little community by just speaking to people and saying hi. And that was so nerve wracking to do. And I remember being so nervous just say, talking to people. And yeah, it's very common for people to feel a bit nervous at the start of university and also a bit overwhelmed with the information because there's so much information coming at you, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with that. I mean, um, a lot of people have from my previous workplace and stuff have been really surprised when I've said that actually I used to be really anxious because I come across as confident because I do put myself out there and I, I sort of channel that fear into excitement and you just fake it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I think I think another a book that I'd recommend as well actually is How to Win Friends and Influence People. I don't know if you've ever read that. I've not read that book yet, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll add that to the description. Yeah, it's really good and it sort of helps you with socialization um, because I never really knew like what to talk about, um, but that gives you some tips and stuff, so that's really helpful. Yeah, um, so. I think um, just th- reflecting on what you were saying, um, first the first couple of weeks they were quite difficult in terms of there's a lot going on. But the positive, everyone's in the same boat, which is I think the most important point they said there. It's probably not just you if you are feeling overwhelmed during the start. And the key thing to do is to try and put yourself out there, out of your comfort zone, and to try and speak to people, to try and talk to new friends, to try and read the things you need to read, and work out what you're doing. Uh, you mentioned earlier about the reading part, which is something I'd like to talk a bit more about. So you mentioned about how you read everything and how now you've learned to read, well, not everything. How has yeah. that mindset changed and how does it change over time for you? So um, for me, um, I'm quite a perfectionist. Um, I'm quite passionate about my work. Um So, I mean, I do remember uh, feeling quite stressed near the start of university. I think it was in the first term. Um, I just felt so... You get pre-reading and I was just getting... Oh, like, when I read, I really enjoy the book, okay? So um, when you study academically, it's different to sort of reading for leisure. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I really like to soak in the information and I like particular words or particular sentences that authors use. Um, or sometimes I don't. And I just think, why would you put it that way? (laughs) Um, but yeah. And so for me, I felt like I was sort of spending so much time on reading. I remember speaking to a lecturer who was actually really, well, I spoke to two actually, and they were both really helpful and they both sort of came at different angles, um, mm. which I found helpful. I mean, one of them said that she was really interested in um, information as well. Um, and, you know, sometimes she'd go to the library and she'd 
sit there for hours and look at the time and be like, oh my gosh, what have I been doing? You know, because mm-hmm. she was so engrossed in the information. She said she didn't really have a tip for me, <laughs> um, but that she gets it and she knows that it's hard. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of comforting. And then um, my other lecturer told me a little anecdote about perfectionism. So he said that um, the thing about a perfectionist is, so you get a perfectionist and you get a different person, okay? Mm. They're both given the same exam questions. So you've got A, B, and C. The perfectionist does A, B, perfect okay but they miss out the marks for question c the next person attempts them all and sort of does like a middle way job of it that gets more marks because they've attempted all of the questions Mm -hmm. and i felt that that actually really helped yeah Um, with reading it's like you might spend ages reading but you're never going to remember all of what you've read and that's what I tell myself and it's like if you see a sentence you're like what does that mean I don't know what that means and sometimes you'll find yourself going over and over again um and it's like does this even matter because you're not going to remember that sentence you're just going to remember like an overview of it um it depends what you're reading for as well so you kind of want to think what am I doing this for so if you're doing it for a lecture I, I mean I've studied a text so hard before that I've gone to the lecture and I'd be like why am I here because I know it and you don't want to do that you want to sort of either scan read it or get what you need from it get an overview so that it can complement your lecture um and it can enhance that what you've what you've learned rather than Mm. you learn it all beforehand I totally I totally agree with that actually which is uh, I felt the exact same way when I was doing full-on reading in my first year Um, and I think what I learned was that you don't always have to do all the reading just like what you're saying it's about prioritization is what I learned so I did I do still do reading but I try to work out if it's relevant and if it's needed Um, and a lot of the time especially when I got started getting busier, and this is an admission on my part, but in my third year, the only things I would properly read for were things that fell into two, one or two categories. Either A, something that had come up in class that I did not understand, I would read more about it, or B, something that was related to an assignment. And they were the only things I would read. If I understood it in class, that was okay, and I'd research it more if I needed it for an assignment, but if I didn't, I don't need to be a perfectionist about this and I could read about it where I needed it rather than reading about it and then never needing to use that information and then it just diluting the other information that I've read and reducing the, that time for it. But when I started university, I didn't know that and so I tried to read everything just like what you did and then I spent all my time thinking I wasn't doing enough, I wasn't good enough and I would have so much information on my brain that I'd struggle to put it down on paper uh, simply. Yes, I totally sympathise with that. It's a nice, it's a nice way of looking at it, actually. Um, I that, like your tip with the assignments um, and your two reasons. Um, I think for me, if something's interested in me, I've I've got like a little section at the back of my notebook. So if there's something I've learned about and I want to research it further, mm. I uh, put it at the back of my book so I can go back to it later. Um, but yeah, I mean, I sat in a lecture with one of my study skills um, lecturers and it was the one about reading. And she said, OK, be honest. There's about 30 of us. Put your hands up if you've done the pre-reading for this session. I think one person put their hand up. <laughs> so it is it is hard to keep on top of everything. Um and, you know, it, you're responsible for your own learning, no one else. Um, you'll, you'll learn what sort of reading is important and what sort of reading isn't and what you can get away with not doing. Um, or, you know, it's about what you want to do. So, I mean, I find studying quite uh, fun, mm-hmm. <laughs> researching. So um, I find that reading a lot, I mean... There's stuff that I've read that's not been recommended and I've found that that's sort of given me a lot of information for my assignments anyway. So, mm-hmm. 
but I mean, it's, it's about being kind to yourself as well. If you've got, I've got conflicting commitments. Yeah. You know, I work, I've got a seven year old. Um, I, my partner works away in the week. So, you know, it's just me in the week, uh, doing everything. And do you know what? You've got to think to yourself, what do I want right now? Do I want to excel at my degree? Um, I want to spend time with my son and I want to stay sane. I don't, I don't want to be stressed. So I'm going to give myself the night off and we're going to do something for me. Um, or who cares? You know, the house is messy today. You know, you're not going to think about that in three years time. Are you, you're not going to be like, Oh, my house was messy on that day. So it's just sort of saying to yourself what, what you want. Yeah. I think it's just worth prioritizing things uh, in general. So there's different priorities and working out what matters in mental health is probably one of the biggest ones. And I'd probably rank it above your degree, if I'm honest. Um, uh, maybe if you let yourself down at times, you may end up doing things that will harm. So if like, you haven't organized yourself very well and you're doing an assignment the day before the deadline, you mental health may go out of the window for that one day, but then you've got to think, okay, now it's the priority. Now I need to focus. But over a long period of time, that might change. Um so we've spoken a lot about reading and the advice we have for reading, which is to pr- learn to prioritise it. You don't need to do it all. At the start, you may feel like you need to do it all, but you don't need to. We talked a little bit make, about making friends and how you need to put yourself out of your comfort zone to talk to others and have other people nervous too. Do you have any other advice uh, for the start of your foundation year or your start of your first year at university and about uh, settling in? I guess the only um, other thing that I would say, um, well, there are a couple of things. So seeing the bigger picture. um, So, I mean, you might be in your first year of university. You might be in your foundation year. um, But I'm not sure how it works in the first year. um, But in the foundation year, you just need to get a pass. Mm. Um, So I just told myself you know as long as I get a pass that's fine so I'm gonna be a bit creative I'm gonna explore sort of what I can get away with or um whether lecturers appreciate you know the creative aspect of an assignment um and just sort of see what marks you get for what something that that's actually something that really really that really reassured me which was um when you start to look at the bigger picture for first year a university is built to help you settle in and that really helped me so first year just like foundation year you just have to pass your assignments and what you do in your first year and your foundation year as well they don't count towards your end degree they don't count for any percentages so if you get ni- like 90 percent, it doesn't count but if you also get 40 percent, that doesn't count so what counts is that you pass um and that's it Everything else goes out the windows and it gives you that time to grow, that time to experiment, that time to settle down. And that's really nice. I remember when I was in my first year, I thought about it and I got pretty decent grades. I was aiming to get a 2-1 and I got just a, just over a 2-1 on average. But internally, I was like, ah, this is progress towards my 2-1 that I, I, I've been making. That's really good. But then those grades were my lowest grades because in the second year, I built on that. and my third year, I built on that even more. And that's what university is all about, is building. And your first year is designed to help you settle in. And that's really, really reassuring and helpful, knowing it doesn't count. You have that chance to learn, adapt, reflect before it does count. Yeah, definitely. Would you say that um, your marks do improve, like even if they're high then as you go through? Well, it depends what marks you're getting, I guess. It will be different for everyone. But um, overall, I think the trend for students is they do tend to go up. Um, for me, they definitely went up. Even when I was doing extra curricular activities, they went up. But um, the first year, like I say, it's a year for reflection. It's not a year where you could, where you need to get the, you know, one hundred percent in every exam or seventy percent or so on. It's the year to learn, get you get your feet, and be ready to go at it and do very well in your second year, and then do even better in your third year. Yeah, definitely. I think another thing that I would say um as well is and just sort of like getting involved it's not all about your grades it's about becoming you and finding out what you want um and just getting involved 
Mm. One of the other podcasts in the series that I've just recorded was all about getting involved in extra critical experience and how that can help you to develop your skills. And I also think it can help you settle in. Getting involved in extracurricular activities can really help you to make friends. So one thing I did was I got involved with the Law Society. Uh, there's lots of societies around and there's lots of academic societies as well. And, and your academic society will have people in it who are in the years above uh, who can give you advice. And that is really useful. Uh, I got to ask my um, the students in the second year when I was in my first year about the lecturers and the assessments and what their regrets were, what their reflections were. And then I could learn from their experience. And that was really, really nice. And I thought it was really useful. Um, and that's one of the things that getting involved in extracurricular activities can do. It's help build those connections who can help mentor you almost without mentoring you and guide you um, and support you. And also give you some really good advice. Yeah, definitely. Um, I did join uh, the Debate Society this year. And that, for me, was... Um, really uh it's like like-minded people i got involved in one of the debates i mean i've not been very active on it like this term <laughs> but no, that think... really helped me through my first term um and it was kind of no nice to meet new people even if it was virtually um i think it's quite difficult as well because i'm not much of um i like face-to-face -face contact i don't i'm not much of a text or anything like that so um I'm quite looking forward to getting involved face to face and meeting people if it does happen in September. Um, but yeah, it's nice to know that there's sort of societies where you can meet those like minded people. I mean, with debate society, it was nice because people were just talking about um, debates, basically, <laughs> which is like what I like. Um, and it was it was nice to know that I had things in common with people. Good. So extracurricular activities and getting involved can be really useful and there's some great support that can be accessed through them. But was there any other support available at the university that really helped you to find your bearings when you started? I think um, lecturers, they were um, really helpful. Mm. I think it helped... Um, sort of uh, getting to know people that were in the same boat as you and talking. I mean, everyone was really friendly and people usually make WhatsApp groups and things like that. So, um, and the lecturers encourage it, to be honest. So um, you will not be just sort of left on your own. Um, I think everyone is just as nervous Um so and and there'll be people that are more confident maybe um that will sort of i don't know I, I kind of feel like some people will just take you under their wing won't they and just make sure that mm. you feel you did but it's also on you to go and make sure you're under that wing <laughs> yeah and if you feel that you're quite confident you can always try and take people under your wing as well um it's just about, I think, making allies. That's what I always thought. It's making friends on your course and also making people who you can talk to if there's no one else around and making allies in your modules who you could just brainstorm ideas with or work with on group projects and so on. Um, that's what I always liked, making lots of friends and contacts and people who were just, just being nice to people at the start. I thought it was really good. I think um, in terms of getting your bearings... Um... I think no matter what new situation it is, whether it's a new job, university, or whatever, you're gonna feel lost for a while. You just gonna, you've just got to accept that. You know, mm -hmm. learning is a messy process, but that's okay because you can look back and you can be like, "Wow, look how much, look how much I've improved," or mm -hmm. "This is what I want to do next year to improve my work." Um, learning is constantly happening and when you're really new to something um it's so easy to feel like what am i doing but in six months time you're going to look back and be like i know what i'm doing now yeah definitely uh 100 agree you probably aren't gonna be you probably might be slightly lost at the start but that's part of the process accept that think about what you can do and it's not just you you can make friends 
you can have use lots of ways of getting your bearings so just go and get involved with extracurricular activities that we've talked about you can access the support of the university as well um and speak to your lecturers about what that is um and yeah there's lots of different ways that you can help get your bearings um one way that helped uh, me to get my bearings i don't know if you've ever heard of this it's something called the peer assisted learning scheme did the peer assisted learning scheme ever help you um so our pal as they are called um was really nice um she did videos on all sorts of things i watched her referencing video um on how to do oscola referencing um that was helpful um she was always sort of uh doing these little um groups that you joined and things so i mean as much as you get involved they can be really useful um i just i think it's just about sort of learning what works for you because for me it's going and being on my own and reading about it or um researching it whereas some people prefer attending uh sessions and things um i mean i've attended library sessions for referencing as well and they're really useful but thank you <laughs> you just need to um find what works for you and how you learn best um and what's gonna help support you as well um but yeah i've always been one to take comfort in my own sort of learning and um yeah <laughs> me too but there is lots of support there to help you as you said there's sessions on the library that i run and my team run and there are sessions uh that are run uh, and there are sessions that are run by the peer assisted learning scheme so that's a scheme where basically every area has someone who's in it who can help uh, answer questions based on studying settling in and so on uh it's an amazing scheme we piloted it when i started um but yeah, peer assisted learning was really helpful. Asking your peers about questions, especially the ones in the high years, really essential uh, to do. I think it was nice to know that there was someone that I could go to if um, I needed some help or some advice because she was in year two, I believe. Um, it was nice to know that if I was getting stuck on a piece of work or I needed advice on how to i don't know speed read or anything like that i could go to her so i think yeah i think that was nice yeah i agree it's nice having someone there to ask for help so we talked about all the support that's available um there's lots of it around have a look have an explore and there'll be some in the description of this podcast as well um but i've got one more question to ask you katie before we get on to the final question which is general advice but what advice would you give to your former self when you started university I think one of the main points um, would be don't stress because you're going to get used to it and you're going to really grow as a person as well as an academic student. Um, I think one of the um, other main points would be to forget everything else, just look at the assessment briefs and just look at what they're saying and what but because ultimately that's what you're aiming for at the end of um at the end of the term that's what you're going to be marked on so i would just have a look at that um and then sort of i think it's for me it's better to pace yourself rather than do it all in one because the more you work on a piece um the more uh, drafts you do and things like that, then if you're looking at it with fresh eyes, it's better to do it that way rather than, oh my gosh, I've got one day to do this. So, I mean, it's easier said than done, <laughs> um, especially when you're just starting university because, I mean, you, I might have looked at that assessment brief and been like, I actually don't know what this is on about. I don't, I don't know how to start. I mean, just look at it like a project, really, and just get creative with it, even if you don't know what it's on about. Uh, I found it really useful. Um, there was a lecturer that set us little workshop tasks. And if you do them and you do the little tasks, it makes your job so much easier in the long run because... Mm -hmm your the reason they're setting that is to to get your juices flowing and um because they they know what you need to learn so 
if you do that and you come around to your assignments, you're going to have information that you can use anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. So the assignment brief is just just anyone who's confused about what one of those is, is this um, basically for every assessment that you have, there's instructions about what is expected from you, what the question is, and lots of information that uh, they'll help you in understanding what is expected of you and what you need to do. They are really, really useful, and we didn't actually have them when I was in my first year, but they started introducing them uh, throughout my time at university, and I find them so, so helpful. Um, we have a lot of videos on the YouTube channel that will be linked in the description of the video podcast um, on the Derby Union Library YouTube channel that you can access to help you understand the assignment brief. Um, but basically, what I'd recommend doing is, if there's any words that you don't know, if you look at it at the start, that's great because you can learn and you can look them up on the internet. You could ask a lecturer, what, what does that word mean? What's expected of me with this? And you can develop. Um, and there'll be lots of support available online as well for working out what those words are and what's expected of you if you are unsure. Um, but do use that assignment brief. I think that's really good advice. So, Alex, what advice would you give to your former self starting university? So um, mine would actually be based on my own reflections. I've got two pieces of advice that I'd give to myself. Uh, one is to ask the stupid questions and to make sure I have the courage to do that. And also not to be afraid of, the, of making mistakes in lectures because I was paralysed with fear at times with putting my hand up in front of everyone else in the, in the audience because we had a lot of students on my course and getting something wrong. And actually I learned in my later years just to be calm and be chill with that type of thing, not to care that I got it wrong, but to actually be happy because if I've got it wrong there, that means I would have got it wrong in the exam if I hadn't have asked. And now I know what the right answer is, so I'll get it better. And so now I just put my hand up if I've got a, with an ask a stupid question if I don't get something, or I um, speak to, or I answer questions and get them wrong all the time, and that's fine. But when I started, I was afraid of that. If you aren't quite as confident and don't feel that you want to go and speak to the uh, go and answer the question in the class or ask a stupid question in the class, you can just speak to the lecturer individually and ask that stupid question. People say there's no such thing as a stupid question, but if you personally feel it's a stupid question, which it isn't, by the way, um, then just speak to the lecturer and ask them. It's better to ask it at the start as well, as I said in the other podcast that I've just recorded this week uh, about experience outside of university with Liz Hayden. Um, the only other piece of advice I would do is to just is exactly what Katie said earlier, which is just to get involved in extracurricular activities to make friends, connections as early as possible, um, and also because that you've got at a university if you're doing a normal degree three years, if you're doing like a foundation degree four years, other degrees might differ though. You've only got limited time, and that time goes really quickly. So if you can get involved in extracurricular activities early, that's more time for you to do those things and balance them properly. So those are my things I would give to my myself if I was starting university now so what do you think about those then Katie yeah I think I definitely agree I mean for myself um I'm quite famous for asking a lot of questions anyway that's good <laughs> um I, I know but then that's like the other extreme so I'm like gosh am I being annoying now like <laughs> all I can hear is my voice <laughs> well a lot of the times if people aren't asking questions or if you ask a question you're asking the question that other students might want to ask but don't have the confidence to ask it and often I've thought to myself oh am I wasting time in the lecture and then if I feel like I really am I can just speak to the lecture outside but if I but often if it's like a couple of questions in um, then other students might benefit from that answer too so that's why I ask questions in, in lectures um, as well as also one-to-one -one. yeah yeah Definitely. I mean, for myself, I am so willing to help anybody. If somebody comes to me and talks to me or um, asks me a question or anything like that, you know, I've gone out of my way to be like, to help them and give them my advice. So maybe it's also about finding someone like that, like that can help you. I don't know. Yeah. There's definitely value in talking to peers and reflecting on the, with, with them and discussing things because sometimes they may have understood something better than you or you may have understood something better than them and they could potentially help you. I uh, do bear in mind though that they um, have their own time and they may be busy, so don't take too much time off of them theirs and um, don't bombard them with questions and things, especially if they don't appear to be wanting them because it may be 
uh, frustrating them or wait using their time too much so you be mindful uh, of that yeah i mean one of my lecturers did say um that reminded us that she's paid to do what she does so you know if you need to email her five million times you can (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah exactly so uh i think that's some really good advice for finding your feet so we've talked a little about ways of getting bearings so making friends getting through the initial chaos of the first few weeks and by accepting it um and also about getting involved to make make contacts and find people who can give you advice and support throughout the university, even in your own subject as well. So that's basically wrapped up the main substantive part of the podcast. But I have one question that I want to ask you that I ask every single guest who comes on the podcast, which is what advice would you give for someone who wants to be successful as a student? Obviously, bear in mind, you have only committed your foundation year. So in a few years, this may change. But what advice would you give now? I think um, what I would say is that everybody's story is different. So everybody has different things that motivate them. Everybody has different things that inspire them. Um, You know, we go through hard times as well. Um, I mean, when I started in September, I just lost someone very close to me. Um, It was really hard bereavement um obviously we had coronavirus um i was teaching my son at home um although that was nice it was uh, quite exhausting <laughs> uh, but my point of that is that everybody's got something at some point and it's just trying to like make that work and reminding yourself of why you're doing what you're doing and um just knowing that in time you'll learn those things that motivate you. Like I like sitting on the sofa and putting my incense sticks on and um, sort of sitting down to study. Sometimes you have to make yourself. Sometimes you're not going to want to do it. So you know what, just take the evening off. Um, And, but sometimes you can, you you can make yourself, come on, I'm going to do an hour. If I do an hour, I can play that video game that I want to play or um, I can do this for myself. You know, it's about giving yourself breaks, about giving yourself rewards and just reminding yourself what you're doing it for as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think learning to motivate yourself is a huge skill and we actually dedicated an entire podcast just on that front and also then how you can persevere through the challenges because at university, almost everyone will have some form of challenge that will come to them. That may be bereavement, it may be illness in the family, it may be your own personal illness. That's kind of going to happen, statistically, especially if you're there for such a long period of time, three or four years, it's very likely to happen to you. So knowing where it does happen, that what you can do and thinking about how you can persevere through it or continue after it, is really um is really important to start considering so we've got a podcast about that uh, i know it happened to me a few times where i had tests and different things that are difficulties but um i managed to get through them and i'm still here now and the university has lots of support available for those type of things when they do occur definitely that's a really good point you know like you're here for three or four years that's longer than i've ever had in a job <laughs> like so yeah i mean you're gonna like Alex said you're gonna have your difficulties and you do anyway so um it's just about knowing that life is more than your work um but just kind of saying to yourself you want to get out of life Mm. exactly so yeah I do listen to that podcast I'll link it in the description of the YouTube video um a a YouTube version it's also available on our podcasting sites as well it's called Perseverance and Motivation uh, with Fran McKay Uh, So thank you very much, Katie, for all your advice that you've given today. I've really appreciated it. And I really appreciate you taking your time to give advice um, for students and how they can find their feet at university. You're welcome. Thanks again for Katie for taking the time to be interviewed and for sharing her honest experiences from her foundation year. Here are some of the key highlights from the episode. First, it is true that starting university may be a little bit daunting and can feel initially overwhelming with lots of information being given to you and new people all around you. However, be reassured, it's not just you who feels this way. 
If you learn to go with the flow and persevere through the first few weeks of university, you'll start building friendships, you'll start learning how the university works, and I promise you, you will find your feet and start to settle in. The second key point from this episode is about reading at the start of university. It is useful to read as much as you can, as is recommended from your reading list, but don't beat yourself up if you can't do it all, especially in the first few weeks when you aren't used to reading. Focus on what is most important based on your assessments, the tutorials, and the things that I mentioned in class that you're struggling with. Over time, you will learn to get quicker with your reading, and you'll learn to prioritise what you need to read and when. Finally, as your first year scores don't count towards your final degree classification, except for the fact that you need to pass your assessments, you can really use your first year at university as an opportunity to understand how university works, to develop your skills, and to make friends and socialise. In the episode, Katie and I discussed the different support that is available at the university from peer to peer. However, there is more support available from the university and I've added lots of links to the description that you may find useful for finding support. Finally, I just want to say to anyone who's listening to this who is either just about to start university or is in the process of starting university at the moment, I wish you really good luck with finding your feet and settling in. I think you'll really enjoy your time at university. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio. And to Lily Kent for transcribing the series. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar and Naomi Bowers Joseph for giving feedback and helping in the planning of the episodes. Thank you very much for listening.